Lots of people feel they are addicted to something these days, whether it's cigarettes, pills, or alcohol, or maybe even sex. Dr. Drew Pinsky is with us again. He's a specialist in addiction medicine and also a paid spokesman for Nicorette, which we'll talk about in a moment. Good morning. Good morning. Do you think addictions all start in the same place? Well, I'm not sure I understand the question except to say they all share a common biology. They okay. all are a disorder of the brain's reward system in such a way that it distorts the brain's fundamental motivational systems. So the usual motivations, working, loving your family, even eating and sleeping, maintaining your health, those things that are usually there coloring our brain's activity so it becomes submerged and a single motivation emerges which is use the drug and literally the brain's biology confuses the message of the drug mm -hmm. with the message of survival itself wow. so that's how powerful the drives are it's literally right. a distortion of the brain's survival systems so now having you, said that let me yeah. just say mm -hmm. that the inciting influence these days and that's just a, the biological disorder that has a genetic basis to it how does that then genetic potential become activated and I always tell my patients which if you have serious enough addiction that you need to see me, there's a nearly 100% probability of childhood trauma. Wow. Mm. Uh, oh, well, let's talk about that then. Uh, because my, the, the other question that I wanted to follow up with is, if in fact there's this, uh, if, if you suspect you may be addicted, what would be the clear, uh, be addicted to something, what would mm -hmm. be the clearest sign to you? Well, there's two, two things I always look for when I'm evaluating a patient. One, is there a family history? This is a genetic disorder, and so is there a family heritage there? And then number two, what have the consequences been from your using, and have you stopped as a result of those consequences? For instance, with smokers, a non-addictive dependent smoker will usually stop smoking or make attempts at stopping when they have the heart attack, have the lung cancer. The mm -hmm. problem with smoking is once you have a consequence, oftentimes it's too late. Right. With alcohol, say, you ruin a job, you, you ruin mm -hmm. In a relationship, and yet you keep using the alcohol. Right. Crack up the car or whatever. I'm going to go back to what you said then about the, the childhood trauma. How does that, does the childhood trauma then sort of, is it like a, a delayed reaction that some at some point later on in life it then helps trigger this genetic propensity? Great question and, and, and well framed, frankly, which is that the fact is childhood trauma changes the trajectory of how our brains develop. And so a child that has been traumatized leaves the frame, which is an interpersonal frame. They don't trust anymore. They can't tolerate closeness. So the frame that allows us to develop the capacity for emotional regulation mm -hmm. is exited. So these kids, as young adults, have not developed the capacity for emotional regulation. So feelings are too prolonged, too intense, too negative, and stuck. So they start reaching outside of themselves for a substance to regulate. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, wow. sex, and then they trigger the addictive process. Mm. As you've been in this business as long as you have, do you see, in terms of the trend, is it, is it because we talk about it more or is there more addiction in our, in our culture? I do think we talk about it more. I think we've been through a period of a virtual pandemic of childhood trauma. So what we're seeing is more severe addictions. It's relatively rare these days to see the straight up alcoholic. They're always addicted to pills and other mm -hmm. substances. Mm -hmm. So the addictions are more severe. And we're seeing it reflected in our celebrities. And the kinds of things people have access to biologically are more addictive, more rapidly addictive, more severely addictive. Mm -hmm. You have a, a sterling reputation. You've decided to uh, uh, endorse a, a kind of uh, Nicorette uh, uh, a product. Yes. Why and why is it important to you? Well, it's, it's that this is just another opportunity. The Nicorette folk have a new product, a new mini lozenge, and lozenges is something I rely upon to help my patients get through the period of nicotine withdrawal, those first few weeks when they have very intense cravings, and these lozenges can drop the cravings and get them through and keep them off cigarettes. 45 million smokers out there. It's the leading cause of preventable death. Mm -hmm. Most of them want to stop. Most of them do. What they don't realize is that on average it takes about nine attempts to stay stopped. So really this just gave me an opportunity to come out again and say, please, try it again. Uh -huh. Also, social support, just as we talked about the frame of how getting support from other people, the social networking, we have a Facebook page, in the forward slash Nicorette, a Facebook page where people can reach out and get social support to help them yeah. with this, going through this t difficult time. Important part of it. Dr. Drew Pinsky, appreciate your time this morning and your expertise. Thank you. Right. A lot happens early on The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS.